Would you like to 10X your productivity and stop feeling so overworked and overwhelmed? Welcome to the Extreme Productivity Podcast with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome. Um, let's see, today, this is a little unusual. I was quoted in the Wall Street Journal, first time that's ever happened. Uh, and if you're listening to this on the archive, it's uh, the May 12th, 2016 edition of the Wall Street Journal. So there was an article called The Secrets of Backing Out on Plans with Grace. And the writer, uh, Charlie Wells, contacted me and he said, hey, I want you to give advice on how to be a responsible flake. He said, you know, in this day and age, we're all so busy that we keep, you know, blowing off people and breaking our plans and canceling on the last minute or with no notice. And I want to know how we can do that gracefully. And, you know, the people who do it and it's okay, like, how are they getting away with it? Well, I, I couldn't do it. You know, I, I said, I don't think that's ever okay. So if you read the article, it turns out I'm the only person quoted that disagrees with this premise. I say, listen, you know, that's not okay. You know, when we say we're going to do something and then we don't do it, we're breaking a commitment. And we're making a choice, you know, and our choices reflect our values. And it doesn't matter if we have a good reason or not. Uh, it might be a good reason. It still doesn't mean it's okay. So I just thought it was an interesting thing that he would even take this position. But I'm, I'm happy that even though I disagreed with him, he still left me in his article. So what do you think about that? Is it ever, is there such a thing as a responsible flake? Is it ever okay to, to, to blow people off? Uh, shoot me an email. I'd love to know what you think. I'm at Kevin at KevinCruz.com. So in the last episode, I revealed like Geraldo Rivera in Capone's safe, <laughs> what was in the Dalai Lama's little red bag. But in this episode, we're going to talk about why everyone needs a personal assistant and how maybe you can get one, even if you don't have enough money. But first, I just did a totally free one hour long webinar, a training, a free training on how to cut your email time in half, how to get to inbox zero every single day. Over 800 people signed up uh, for this webinar. And if you weren't on it, if you didn't know about it, it means you're not on my email list. So if you want to know when my next free training is, I try to do one about uh, once a month. Um, just go sign up for my newsletter at productivity-podcast.com. On to this, uh, this episode. So most of the small business and solo professionals, the solopreneurs as they're called, you know, most of them don't have an assistant. Uh, I've got friends who have, you know, their CEOs in bigger companies. They all have assistants, but the, the independent lawyers, the independent financial planners, the independent consultants and coaches that I know, they don't have an assistant. And when I ask them why they say, you know, they, they'll say, well, they're, they're a waste of money. You know, I know how to use my own computer. Uh, I can keep my own calendar. Uh, I don't really have a need for one. But um, venture capitalist, a guy named Mark Suster, he's actually my favorite VC. He writes a blog called Both Sides of the Table. You know, he made a compelling case for why entrepreneurs should hire an admin as the very first hire, you know, once they get some, some funding or some kind, some money at all. He wrote, while I'm passionate about being scrappy when you start and controlling your costs, I'm equally passionate about performance. And I've seen way too many CEOs get bogged down in minutia because they were used to it from the scrappy phase. They've struggled to scale. Think about it. Your single most valuable asset in the early days is your senior team. And nobody's more valuable than the founding team, the founder. And you're bogged down in expense claims, booking hotel rooms, scheduling meetings, dealing with a leaky toilet, processing payroll, ordering computers, etc. So that's Mark's take. And as I like to say, you know, there's an old line that says, if you don't have an admin, you are an admin. If you don't have an assistant, you are an assistant. So even if you can do all the administrative work yourself, you know, why should you? That one hour a day you spend running to the post office, balancing the checkbook, booking your own airline tickets, you know, it'd be better off prospecting for new business 
or learning to make sure that you are the expert in your industry or thinking creatively or strategically so that you can outmaneuver the competition. You should always spend as much time as possible using your unique strengths, you know, on your highest leverage activities. Running out to Staples to buy printer paper, you know, it doesn't fall into that category. Now, I watched an interview, uh, maybe it was late last year, with Tony Robbins. And he tells a similar story of starting out. Now, he was still a teenager and he had no money. He was broke. Um, but initially, he did hire someone for just two hours a day. So this is, this is his story. This is Tony talking. He said, I think in the very beginning, the hard thing is you think you can only do it yourself and then there's only so many hours and you've got kids and family and friends and how do I do it all? The answer is you hire someone. You trade with someone. You trade them for two hours. That's what I did in the beginning because I, I remember I was just really young in my career. In the early days, I was running to get the dry cleaner so I could get my only two suits because I didn't get them. Then the place closes and I can't get on the plane. And I was running to the airport, sweating like crazy, uh, sweating, trying to get in the door. And I was like, what is wrong with this picture? I could be doing something that's so productive and I'm standing in line at the dry cleaning place. This is just nuts. And so I was really like, I was 17, 18, 19. I don't know what I was. And I said, I'm going to hire somebody two hours a day. That's what I need to start with. And then it was four hours. And so my view is I don't do anything that someone else can do better. And I don't do anything that isn't the highest and best use of my time. Words of wisdom from Tony Robbins. I don't do anything that isn't the highest and best use of my time. Now, if you're not ready for that first hire, you know, you might like, you're not going to hire a full-time admin. That's okay. I mean, you, you think about outsourcing. Now, outsourcing in today's world for solo practitioners, for small businesses, means hiring a company to do some task or just hiring a virtual assistant, a VA, you know, or someone to do a certain project from a site like upwork.com. You know, when you outsource work to others, you free up the time you need to work on your passions. You know, you take advantage of your abilities and your strengths. I'm amazed at how many uh, new entrepreneurs contact me and I don't know, they're experts in relationships or career growth or whatever it is. And they talk to me about how they just had a horrible week. They just spent 80 hours that week, you know, struggling with uh, WordPress and setting up their, their, their website. And they struggled with their email newsletter software and how to set it up. And it's got an error. And they ask me, so what program do you use? Which one do you like? And I always say, you know what? Like, I don't do that stuff myself. And even when I was dead broke, I didn't do that stuff myself. And I, I know a little bit about computers. I probably could do it myself. But I'd rather pay somebody 10 bucks an hour or even 50 bucks an hour if they're really good to do it right the first time. They're going to do it better than I will. And I will then stay focused on what I do best. Now, there are some things that maybe you shouldn't outsource or delegate. You know, I remember uh, watching Mark Cuban on uh, Shark Tank, the TV show, and he said that he still washes his own laundry. He still does his own laundry at home. You know, this multi-billionaire who obviously has a lot of staff and a lot of help. And, you know, I thought about it, like I do too. Um, I, I still do my own laundry. It'd be very easy for me to hire someone to come in and do my laundry or to just like drop it off at the laundry place that does it and then gives it to you all clean. But I kind of like, I just found it, I guess I continue to find it kind of grounding somehow. Like I'm washing my own dirty underwear. You know, I'm, I'm, if I don't do it once a week, I'm going to run out and I'm going to fold it. And if I mess it up, I'm, it's going to shrink because I put it on uh, too long of a hot cycle. Like I do my own laundry and I have for, I don't know, since I was 12 or 13 years old, I have. Um, and you know, like I, I choose not to have uh, a full-time nanny or a live-in nanny for my three kids. Now my kids are a little older now, but I mean, I was a single dad when they were all really, really small and, and I'm not judging others who do have live-in nannies. I know a lot of people, probably most of my friends have, you know, full-time support for their 
their kids. Um, it's just not the right decision for me. You know, I, I don't know. I'm a little weird. Like I just, I'm a little uncomfortable with a non family member sleeping in my house and being there as I walk around in my, you know, shorts and t-shirt or whatever, right out of bed. But more importantly, like I just, you know, parenting is my first value and I'm in a, I'm fortunate in my, you know, career success that I have time flexibility. So as much of the parenting stuff that I can do personally, you know, I'm choosing to do. Uh, so is that working on my business unique ability? No, but it's aligning with my values. So uh, I'm choosing what not to, to get help with. So I don't know, you know, how, what, what's the takeaway here? So it, the, the easy one is if you are listening and you are a solopreneur, get an assistant, you know, even if it's only an hour a day, two hours a day, even if it's a virtual assistant to help you with your email and your calendar and your appointments and all that kind of stuff. Um, even if you have to hire people off of Upwork or Fiverr to help set up your WordPress site, you know, it's worth it. Um, if, if you're a solo professional, you know, let's say you're a, a, a financial planner. Well, do you know two other financial planners and you guys could split the cost of an assistant? I mean, that's an easy way to make it very affordable. Now, what about, what if you're, you know, a full-time employee in a big corporation or you're a stay at home parent, what does this have to do with you? It still has a lot to do with you. I mean, try to outsource all the things that you don't like doing, that don't give you energy, or at least some of them. You know, hire a teenager to come watch your toddler for two hours in the afternoon so you can go pay bills or clean closets or relax or go for a run. Um, you know, if you're taking your kids to and from school, carpool, time swap with other parents. You know, you'll do one way, they'll do the other, and you'll get 30 minutes back in your life every day. You know, pay the kid down the street to shovel the snow or to mow your lawn or to rake the leaves. Unless you enjoy doing it, it's probably worth the 25 bucks or 30 bucks. And you're doing a favor to the kid down the street and and teaching the kid, you know, reward for, for initiative and hard work. So listen, if you're a stay-at-home parent, yeah, it's going to cost you $10 an hour to get that help. But isn't your mental health, your sanity, your life worth so much more than that? We know our emotions are contagious. Our emotions spread to our husband, our wife, even to our kids. Isn't $10 an hour worth uh, um, you know, maximizing the emotional health of your, of your family? So the question I have, whether you're a solopreneur or just trying to get more done at home, what are you going to delegate? this week. What are you going to delegate this week? All right. Before you seize the day, do me a favor. It's a small favor. Make a giant poster that says, I love extreme productivity podcast with Kevin Cruz and just walk around your neighborhood with it, or maybe go to the mall. Small favor. What's that? You don't have any poster board? <laughs> All right, fine. Next time you're in the movie theater, just right in the middle of the movie, stand up, shout out loud. I love the Extreme Productivity Podcast with Kevin Cruz. Not your style? All right. Well, maybe you can hop onto iTunes and just take 30 seconds to leave an honest review. The more reviews this show gets, the more likely iTunes is to recommend it to other people. Big thank you in advance for doing that. Until next week, remember, we need to master our minutes to master our lives.